Welcome to Guideline Central. My name is Dr. Tabitha Michaud, and today we'll be discussing the CDC's new clinical practice guidelines titled the CDC Clinical Practice Guidelines for Prescribing Opioids for Pain. Now, these guidelines were first released in November of 2022 and can be found on the CDC's website. There's also a link to the full text guidelines on our website at guidelinescentral.com. Now, these guidelines were actually an update to the CDC's 2016 guidelines titled Prescribing Opioids for Chronic Pain. And this one is going to include recommendations for acute, subacute, and chronic pain and is intended for clinicians prescribing pain medications, including prescribing opioids, in the outpatient settings for patients older than 18. However, these recommendations do not apply to patients who have pain from sickle cell disease, cancer, or pain related to palliative or end-of-life care. For this guideline, the CDC has used the ACIP's adaptation of the grade framework. That means for each recommendation, the CDC will give both a category grading of either A or B, as well as a type of evidence grading from 1 through 4, depending on the quality of the available evidence supporting that recommendation. And now in this guideline, there's going to be 12 recommendations from the CDC for prescribing opioids for pain, so let's get into the guidelines. Now these recommendations from the CDC were divided into four sections. The first section's recommendations are all related to determining whether or not to initiate opioid therapy for pain management. So our first recommendation from the CDC was given a category B type three evidence grading, and that's for the recommendation that non-opioid therapies are at least as effective as opioids for many common types of acute pain. The CDC goes on to say that clinicians should maximize the use of non-pharmacological and non-opioid pharmacological therapies as appropriate for the specific condition and patient and should only consider opioid therapy for acute pain if the benefits anticipated outweigh the risks for the patient. And before prescribing opioid therapy for acute pain, clinicians should discuss with their patients realistic benefits and the known risks of opioid therapy. Now our next recommendation from the CDC was given a category A type two evidence grading, and that's for the recommendation that non-opioid therapies are preferred for subacute or chronic pain. Now clinicians again should maximize the use of non-pharmacological and non-opioid pharmacological therapies as appropriate for the specific condition and patient, and should only consider initiating opioid therapy if the expected benefits for pain and function are anticipated to outweigh the risks for the patient. Now, before starting opioid therapy for subacute or chronic pain, clinicians should discuss with their patients the realistic benefits and known risks of opioid therapy. They should also work with their patients to establish treatment goals for pain and function, and should consider how opioid therapy will be discontinued if the benefits do not outweigh the risks. Our next few recommendations from the CDC fall under the section titled Selecting Opioids and Determining Opioid Dosages, which brings us to recommendation number three which was given a category A, type four evidence grading, and that's for the recommendation that when starting opioid therapy for acute, subacute, or chronic pain, clinicians should prescribe immediate release opioids instead of extended release or long-acting opioids. Our fourth recommendation from the CDC recommends that when opioids are initiated for opioid naive patients with acute, subacute, or chronic pain, clinicians should prescribe the lowest effective dosage. Additionally, if opioids are continued for subacute or chronic pain, clinicians should use caution when prescribing opioids at any dosage and should carefully evaluate the individual benefits and risks when considering increasing the dosage. Also, clinicians should avoid increasing dosages above levels likely to yield diminishing returns to benefits relative to the risks for patients. And this recommendation was given a category A, type three evidence grading. For our next recommendation, the CDC gave a category B with type four evidence grading, and that's for the recommendation that for patients already receiving opioid therapy, clinicians should carefully weigh benefits and risks and exercise care when changing opioid dosages. If the benefits outweigh the risks of continued opioid therapy, clinicians should work closely with patients to optimize non-opioid therapies while continuing their opioid therapy. If benefits do not outweigh the risks of continued opioid therapy, clinicians should optimize other therapies and work closely with their patients to gradually taper to lower dosages. Alternatively, if warranted based on the individual circumstances for that patient, appropriately taper and discontinue opioids. Unless there are indications of a life-threatening issue, such as warning signs of an impending overdose, 
opioid therapy should not be discontinued abruptly, and clinicians should not rapidly reduce opioid dosages from higher dosages. Our next two recommendations fall under the section titled Deciding Duration of Initial Opioid Prescription and Conducting Follow-Up. And that brings us to recommendation number six, which was given a category A grading with a type 4 evidence. In this recommendation, the CDC recommends that when opioids are needed for acute pain, clinicians prescribe no greater quantity than needed for the expected duration of the pain that's severe enough to require opioids. For recommendation number seven, the CDC recommends that clinicians should evaluate benefits and risks with patients within one to four weeks of starting opioid therapy for subacute or chronic pain or for escalation of dosages. Clinicians should also regularly reevaluate the benefits and risk with their patients of continued opioid therapy. And this was given a category A recommendation with a type four evidence grading. Now our last few recommendations are gonna fall under this section titled assessing risk and addressing potential harms of opioid use, which brings us to recommendation number eight, which was given a category A grading with type four evidence. For this recommendation, the CDC recommends before starting or periodically during the continuation of opioid therapy, clinicians should evaluate risks of opioid-related harms and discuss these risks with their patients. Clinicians should work with patients to incorporate management plan strategies to mitigate risk, including offering naloxone. For our ninth recommendation, the CDC gave a Category B Type 4 evidence grading, and here the CDC recommends when prescribing the initial opioid therapy for acute, subacute, and chronic pain, and periodically during the opioid therapy for chronic pain, clinicians should review a patient's history of controlled substance prescriptions using state PDMP data. Using this data, clinicians can determine if the patient is receiving opioid dosages or combinations that put the patient at high risk for overdose. For recommendation number 10 from the CDC, this was given a category B type four evidence grading. And here the CDC recommends when prescribing opioids for subacute or chronic pain, clinicians should consider the benefits and risks of toxicology testing to assess for prescribed medications, as well as other prescribed and non-prescribed controlled substances. For recommendation number 11, the CDC gave a category B type three evidence grading. And here they recommend that clinicians should use particular caution when prescribing opioid pain medications and benzodiazepines concurrently. And clinicians should consider if the benefits outweigh the risks of concurrent prescribing of opioids and other central nervous system depressants. And our last recommendation from the CDC, recommendation number 12, here was given a category A type one evidence grading. And this recommendation says that clinicians should offer or arrange treatment with evidence-based medications to treat patients with opioid use disorder. The CDC goes on to say that detoxification on its own without the use of medications for opioid use disorder is not recommended for patients with opioid use disorder because of the increased risk of resuming drug use overdose, and death related to overdose. And that wraps up the CDC's 12 recommendations for prescribing opioids for pain. Now this of course was just the bird's eye view approach of things in our guideline central quick reference format. So if you're looking for more information about these recommendations, including implementation considerations, supporting rationales, and more information on the type of grade framework that they used, you can find the link to the full text guideline on our website at guidelinecentral.com. While you're there, make sure to check out our library of guideline quick reference content, as well as hundreds of clinical practice guidelines from over 45 different medical societies. Thank you everyone for joining us today to talk about the CDC's 2022 Prescribing Opioids for Pain recommendations, and we'll see you guys on the next guideline.